So before we start, <clears throat> I just want to take a moment to think about the land that we're located on, wherever we happen to find ourselves, whether it's here in the church at Union United, or whether it's in the church in Dorchester, or whether it's in Alberta where Dawn is, or wherever we happen to find ourselves. While we are the current stewards of the land, it was not always so. For thousands of years before Europeans and others arrived here, there were already peoples here who were stewards of the land. The Anishinaabe, the Atawandaran, the Haudenosaunee, and others. And before there were people, the land was. As Indigenous peoples and Christians alike, we acknowledge that the land which sustains us all, the land on which we live and move and have our being, belongs to God, our Creator. And I would invite Alan up to light the candle. While he's doing that, I'm going to uh, yeah, just a second. We'll light the candle. There we go. Jesus Christ, the light of the earth. And this is where the services are different, Kathleen. So, yes, go for the prelude.
<clears throat> and you'll notice that Kathleen does not play like Marlene. And so we're going to sing our gathering music, You Are Holy. <clears throat> and we have a canter today, too, so you don't have to listen to me lead at all. You are holy, you show us the way. You are holy, you show us the way. You show us, you show us, you show us the way. You show us, you show us, you show us the way. Okay, so I'm going to invite anyone online, if you've got birthdays or celebrations or any prayer requests, to send those in using the chat feature. And in the meantime, I'm going to go through some announcements. The first is... Um, to welcome Kathleen Hyde. Uh, Kathy Lyman is at a ball tournament in Montreal this weekend with uh, Lexi. And uh, her team, Lexi's team won gold for Ontario last weekend in the tournament. But just because they won gold doesn't mean they're at nationals because they were defeated in some kind of crazy knockout thing. And so, uh, Lexi is there with a team from Aurora who invited Lexi to play. So that's quite something what it says about Lexi. So Kathy and Lexi are in Montreal. So we have Kathleen with us. So thank you, Kathleen, for, for coming here. And Kathleen has um, brought her uh, favorite uh, soloist uh, cantor, Nancy Quinn, uh, to uh, lead us in the singing this morning and to uh, provide a solo later on in the service. And Nancy, you're from First St. Andrews United Church in London. Okay, wonderful. So welcome and thank you. Um, for everyone, just a reminder, I'm, I'm going to be walking in uh, that, uh, that damn hill walk at Springbank Park. That's in September to raise money for Indwell. A number of people have started uh, donating. Um, there's a link that's listed in the bulletin, or if you go to the dorchesterunitedchurch.ca website, there's a button there that you can press that will take you automatically in there so you don't have to type all the Q2 question mark 394 uppercase U lowercase B stuff um, for union cruise night monday august the 29th it's a week tomorrow 4 30 till 8 is the show and um, i understand beef on a bun will be available from five to seven Are there any other announcements here in union Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, though. And you said your 30, 37th anniversary. Wow. So Kurt robbed the cradle. He married a two-year-old. <clears throat> okay. For Dorchester, a couple of announcements. Holy Diner, um, your final uh, Holy Diner is this coming Thursday evening, five till seven. Uh, also for the coffee time on Wednesday, August the 31st, 9.30 till 10, Alan and Marion Woods have extended a special invitation to everyone to come and see Alan's extensive antique collection. Um, and no, it doesn't include Alan or Marion. And it's bring your own lawn chair and bring your own coffee cup. Coffee will be provided. Um, also advance notice that um, there will be a celebration of life service for Fern Smith 
on September the 10th at the Dorchester Arena Auditorium and more news will be coming on that shortly. And I don't see any chats, so I'm gonna say our um, birthdays and anniversaries. Heather's having an anniversary. Heather and Kurt, 37 years. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Let's see, get rid of this piece of paper. So I'm going to invite Lee and Marion to unmute and see if they would lead the congregation in the call to worship. Yes. Okay, thank you. So everyone here remembers there's going to be a lag. We come like Abraham, Sarah, and John the Baptist. People with vision. We come like Job, Thomas, and the Samaritan woman. People with questions. We come like Moses, Jeremiah, and Mary. People with self-doubts. We come like Joshua, Deborah, and Stephen. People with courage. We come like David, Mary Magdalene, and Paul. People with regrets. We come like Hagar, Uriah, and the Syrophoenician woman. People with wisdom from the margins. We come like Rebecca and Samuel, like Hosea and Esther, like Nathaniel and Martha, like John, Mark, and Priscilla. People with a part to play in the story of faith. Come, let us worship the Lord our God. Thank you, Marian. And our opening hymn is number 245, Praise the Lord with the Sound of Trumpet. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Praise the Lord with the harp and lute. Praise the Lord with the gentle sounding flute. Praise the Lord in the field and forest. Praise the Lord in the city square. Praise the Lord anytime and anywhere. Praise the Lord in the wind and sunshine. Praise the Lord in the dark of night. Praise the Lord in the rain or snow or in the morning light. Praise the Lord in the deepest valley. Praise the Lord on the highest hill. Praise the Lord, never let your voice be still. Praise the Lord with the crashing cymbal. Praise the Lord with the pipe and string. Praise the Lord with the joyful songs you sing. Praise the Lord on a weekday morning. Praise the Lord on a Sunday noon. Praise the Lord for the light of sun or moon. Praise the Lord in the time of sorrow. Praise the Lord in the time of joy. Praise the Lord every moment, nothing let your praise destroy. Praise the Lord in the peace and quiet. Praise the Lord in your work or play. Praise the Lord everywhere in every way. Please be seated. I'd invite you to join in the opening prayer. Why is it, Lord, that we allow our grudges to weigh us down, our anger to disfigure us, our fears to cripple us? Why are we unable or unwilling to let go of our grudges, release our anger, dismiss our fears? Is it because we have forgotten that you, O oh Lord, are the rock of our refuge, the ground upon which we walk, the outcropping upon which we lean for support when we are weighed down, bent over, 
rippled by our doubts and fears. Come now and touch us once again with your healing forgiveness. Remind us once again that you, O oh Lord, are our hope and our comfort, our joy and our peace. May your praise ever be a song in our hearts and a hymn on our lips. May it be so. Amen. Okay. So the anthem this morning is uh, written by Alice Finnamore for the UCW 60th anniversary celebrations. And I think Nancy's going to say some more about it. And uh, Alice Finnemore is actually a minister of the United Church, and she wrote the lyrics to this old, wonderful spiritual called Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Some of you may remember it. So um, we've shortened it a little bit in one six verses, um, and while it's joyful, it's a little repetitive, but that's good because we're going to do five verses, and I'm going to suggest that the, the first one, you just listen to it. And then if you uh, would like, you're very much welcome to join into with the refrain, which is very simple, but very ne necessary and needed in these days of challenge. Into your hand, and there are a number of different ways and rhythms that you can sing that and you hear that. And then uh, the final verse, um, you'll hear that I do it, uh, verse five, acapella. In your hands, Lord, I know there's hope. And then um, Catherine will sing this again with the model for the train. And again, you're welcome to join in. So it's joint for that song. Mm -hmm. I 
think it's rumbling out there. Let's see here. You're, you're hungry, Alan? Is that what it is? So, um, let's see, who can I, um, who can I talk to this morning? Fred, what's your favorite sport? Golf. <laughs> Gee, I was hoping someone was going to say hockey. Anybody like hockey? It works better. Eugene, okay. Eugene, what's your favorite sport? Hockey. Woohoo! What are the rules, some of the rules in hockey? Well, the, 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 the rules, the real rules, the, the things they're supposed to do all the time. Yeah. Icing, yeah. You get roughing penalties, yeah. Do they have to wear helmets? They have to wear them, or is it optional? You have to, right? When I grew up, Guy Lafleur with his long flowing hair would fly down the ice, no, no helmet. But you have to wear a helmet now. And what, what happens if you don't wear a helmet when, when you're on the ice? They don't let you on. But if you were out there and, like, if you got on the ice without your helmet, what would happen to you? <laughs> Could you get a penalty in pro sports if you went out on the ice without, or you took it off on the, you're just, you're just kicked off. So there's consequences for not following the rules. Okay. Okay, so if, what about if someone gets hurt on the ice? What happens then? Everybody stops, yeah? Trainer comes out. What, and have, sometimes I notice if somebody gets hurt on the ice, people take their, their, put their sticks down and they take their gloves off and they take their helmets off and they go and they try and see if there's anything they can do to help. Is that, you ever seen that? For the ones who think they know what they're doing. Okay, yeah. So sometimes so sometimes people are on the ice without their sticks and their gloves and their helmets. The rules are suspended. Right? Yeah, yeah. While while play is stopped. Yeah, for the injury. So in Judaism, there's this rule. And the rule is no work is allowed on the Sabbath. No work. So if you've ever been like in a Jewish apartment building with an elevator, work, like pushing the button on the elevator is work. So they have Sabbath elevators and it goes up and it stops at every single floor on the way up till it gets to the top, and then it stops at every single floor on the way down. So nobody has to do work by pressing a button to call the elevator or to tell it what floor to take them to. So you get the milk run of the elevator on the Sabbath. So that's the rule, and it's, you know, people take it very seriously. Well, in the gospel lesson today, Jesus broke that rule. He did work on the Sabbath. And the leader of the synagogue points it out and says, you broke the rule. You did work. And the work that Jesus did was he healed a woman who was crippled. He did the work of healing. And Jesus told the leader of the synagogue that the woman was hurting and she needed to be healed. He told the leader of the synagogue that people are more important 
than rules in real life, not just in hockey. Jesus' action reminds us all that we, you and I, all of us, are more important than the rules that people make up. When someone's hurting, God wants us to put the rules on pause and share God's healing with them. And so we pray, dear God, thank you for showing us that you love us more than anything else. Help us to love each other in the same way. Amen. Okay. And our hymn is number 157 from the More Voices. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a glimpse of God's new creation. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am an endless prayer. I am a yearning for contemplation. I am an endless prayer. I am an endless prayer. I am an angry voice. I am compassion and consternation. I am an angry voice. I am an angry voice. I am a cry for peace. I am commitment and dedication. I am a cry for peace. I am a cry for peace. I am a song of joy. I am the moment of jubilation. I am a song of joy. I am a song of joy. We are the hands and feet of Christ in the world. We serve each according to our own gifts and abilities. And for those needs that are beyond our gifts and abilities or in far off places, we offer the support of our prayers and the financial resources we have been blessed with. Oh boy, and I think last time we said someone was going to pick up the plate and bring it forward while we're so. Sure. Okay, thank you. So, our for the gift of creation. For the gift of creation, the gift of your love, and the gift of the Spirit by which we live, we thank you and give you the fruit of our hands. May your grace be proclaimed by the gifts that we give. In the name and in the spirit of Jesus, we bring our gifts to you, O God. Help us to give them with a ready mind, a willing spirit, and a joyful heart. Amen. Thank you, Bernice, and you may be seated. Does anybody have any prayer requests this morning? No prayer requests. Aren't we blessed? And I don't see any on the chat, so let us pray. We thank you, compassionate God, that you hear the prayers of our hearts. We pray for your church, 
in particular for Bedford United Church in Windsor, as they seek to be your serving healing hands and your voice of justice and compassion in that place. We pray for your children the world over, especially this week, we pray for the peoples of Liberia and Sierra Leone. We pray for all who rejoice at a baby's new birth and for all who mourn when the circle is incomplete, when a friend or loved one has died. We pray especially for the friends and family of Melissa Harrison and Marlene Smith. We pray for all who are grateful when their work meets with success and for all who suffer because no work is to be found. For all who are bored, not having enough to do. For all who are tired, having too much to do. For all who are surrounded by the love of family and friends. We pray for all who are lonely or ill or dying. We pray especially this week for Dale Dickey, Donna Harrison, Nick Jones, Marge Lanning, Paul McMillan, Marlene Parrish, their loved ones and caregivers and those known only in the silence of our own hearts. Thank you for hearing us in every situation of life. Help us to support one another always, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. We want to be joined together as members of the body of Christ, loving one another and serving the world. Like Jesus, we want to respond to each human being who crosses our path with sensitivity and compassion. All this we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to check and see. I'm wondering if Gail, <clears throat> no, if Gail might uh, lead the congregation in the responsive reading. Okay. I need to turn the volume up for you, Gail. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fine. Thank you. In you, O oh God, I seek refuge. May I never be disappointed. In your righteousness, save and rescue me. Incline your cares and deliver me. Be a sheltering rock for me, a fortress where I may find safety. For you are my rock and my strength. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you are my hope, my truth, my, for me, my youth. Uh, from the time of my birth, I have learned on you, leaned on you. Thank you, Gail. You're welcome. And our scripture today is taken from Luke's gospel, 
listen for the word of God. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, Immediately, she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue was indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath. He kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites. Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things being done by him. May God add a blessing on the reading of this holy word and forever put it, write its meaning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And our hymn is number 358, When Jesus the Healer. When Jesus the healer passed through Galilee, heal us, heal us today. The deaf came to hear and the blind came to see. Heal us, Lord Jesus. A paralyzed man was let down through a roof. Heal us, heal us today. His sins were forgiven, his walking the proof. Heal us, Lord Jesus. The death of his daughter caused Jairus to weep. Heal us, heal us today. The Lord took her hand and he raised her from sleep. Heal us, Lord Jesus. When blind Bartimaeus cried out to the Lord, Heal us. Heal us today, his faith made him whole, and his sight was restored. Heal us, Lord Jesus. The lepers were healed, and the demons cast out. Heal us, heal us today, a bent woman straightened to laugh and to shout. Heal us, Lord Jesus. The twelve were commissioned and sent out in two. Heal us, heal us today, to make the sick whole and to spread the good news. Heal us, Lord Jesus. There's still so much sickness and suffering today. Heal us, heal us today. We gather together for healing and prayer. Hear us, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. It's a little strange. Paper. Use this for a while. Have you ever noticed people's feet? I've made a study of them. Let me tell you, there's a lot you can tell by looking at people's feet. There's the feet of the Roman soldiers in their high sandals. 
sandals that are almost completely closed in, protect their feet during battle. And, and during those long marches, sandals with heavy soles to last through those long marches. And they house feet that was, would as soon stand on your neck as they pierce you with a sword as they would ignore you altogether. Kind of makes you shiver. There's the feet of the wealthy, robed in elegant sandals of the finest leather. Feet, soft feet, clean feet, with neatly trimmed nails and polished. They're proud and arrogant feet, those feet. And then there's the feet of the very poor, bare feet, dry and dirty, heavily calloused. Sometimes they're so dry that they're cracked and bleeding, causing them to be caked in blood and dirt, their feet that are tired and, pardon the pun, defeated looking. Beautiful, it is said, are the feet of those who bring good news, but, but I wouldn't know, for I've never seen such feet, and long have I searched for them. Eighteen years I have searched for such feet ever since I became bent over and crippled. It's been so long, I can't even remember exactly when or how or why I'm crippled. It doesn't really matter anymore. One thing I know, while my bondage may be visible, each of us, each of us, is crippled by something. Even if it's visible or not. It may be abject poverty, could be pride, could be expectations we have of life or of ourselves or how others will treat you or behave, or you name it. But every one of us is bound by something. Even Jeremiah was bound. God called him to be a messenger, to speak for God. And Jeremiah protested. He wasn't old enough or wise enough to speak for God, he said. Right. He was right. He wasn't old enough or wise enough to speak for God. But with God, all things are possible. I wonder how Jeremiah's feet looked. You see, to some, he carried good news, planting seeds of hope, building up confidence, but to others, to others he carried words of warning and of condemnation and of destruction. I wonder what his feet look like. You know, being bent over like this comes with many challenges, mostly what I see is, well, me, my own feet to be specific. It's hard to see much else and that's a hazard. You see, I'm constantly bumping into people and things because, well, it's difficult to see where I'm going and I can't see. 
what others see. My perspective is different. The world prescribed by my vision is very small. Exactly. Another thing I know, this thing that has crippled me has also sucked the life out of me. I no longer live, but simply survive from day to day. And the same is true for all of you who are bound by something. You're not truly alive, but only survive from day to day. Oh, that I could find those feet. Wait a minute. It's, it's them. It's those beautiful feet. They're the most beautiful feet I've ever seen. They're not closed off and indifferent like the feet of the Roman soldiers. They're not the proud and arrogant feet of the wealthy. They're not the dry, cracked, dirty, bare feet of the very poor. These feet, they're shod in simple sandals, feet dusty from the road. But they stand there with steadfast purpose and, and with promise. What, what's that? You, you release me from my ailment? I can, I can stand. I feel whole. I feel alive again. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. What's that? You, you call me to be like Jeremiah? You want me to tell the world about the grace that you've shown to me? Consider it done. The story isn't simply a story about an unnamed woman a couple of thousand years ago. It's a story about us today. It's not simply a story of an individual. It's also a story that applies to us as a congregation, as a denomination, even, even as the wider body of Christ. Sometimes congregations are bent over double by fear. Fear of change. Fear of the future. Recent figures show that the United Church of Canada is now closing churches as fast as we were opening them in the 50s and 60s. You know, one a week. None of us, not you, not me, none of us want to be the ones on watch when our church closes. We allow those fears to cripple us, to bend us over double. Vaclav Havel, notwithstanding, fear is the opposite of faith. Our fears limit our vision. They limit our imagination. We wind up seeing only 
our own feet. We don't see what's around us. We don't see possibilities or opportunities or callings. We can't see what's coming in the future. We only see the immediate. We want the church to grow and to thrive. We need to stop looking at our feet. To stand up straight and tall and to look out. Look out at the community that surrounds us. Look out at the needs. Look out at the opportunities to serve. Look out at the future. Look out and not in. People, do you not know it? The Lord walks with you every moment of every day and waits for you to recognize what it is that binds you, cripples you, sucks the life out of you. And when you do, ask God and you too will be set free. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May your feet, our feet, become beautiful feet, bringing good news to all in need. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 639, One More Step Along the World I Go. One more step along the world I go. One more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new. Keep me traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Round the corner of the world I turn, more and more about the world I learn. New things that I see. You'll be looking at along with me, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. As I travel through the bad and good, keep me traveling the way I should. Where I see no way to go, you'll be telling me the way I know. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Give me courage when the world is rough. Keep me loving though the world is tough. Leap and sing in all I do. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. You are older than the world can be. You are younger than the life in me. Ever old and ever new. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. So Suzanne, just leave it on. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace so that you may abound in hope by the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit.
And we sing. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Just leave it on, Suzanne. that um, a professor, uh, Professor Catalonia, she uh, is of Gaelic descent, and she teaches at the College of Gaelic Studies in Nova Scotia. So um, at our UCW conference, we put our communion hymn, and um, we uh, learned the refrain, which I'm going to be singing for you. And Kathleen is going to be playing the verses um, with beautiful interpretive skill. Um, when we talked about this, Kathleen and I, we decided that we would dedicate it to the memory of the ancestors who came on the coffin ships, as they were sometimes called, from Ireland, and with great hardship um, for the pioneers from many parts of the world, from the Slavic states, from Scotland, from England. And while we do not have the travails that they had on the coffin ship, we are in hard times. And you'll hear that in the translation because we sing it four times, twice in Gaelic and twice in English. So we dedicate it both to the ancestors and we also bring it to you as an encompassing invocation to help all of you and all of our loved ones and our world in these hard times. Thank you. 